every time I have to verify it. All right, uh, so dynamic UIs in Civi and Angular. Hopefully you guys uh, stopped by Karun's session earlier and saw a little bit about setting up a developer environment and some of the tools that are involved there because I'm not gonna do any real discussion about that. Um, and we'll just try to dig in a little bit on uh, Angular, which is a popular JavaScript framework that we've been using increasingly in the past few releases of Civi CRM. All right, so pretty quick outline. Do some background. Why Angular? What, what problem has it been solving for us? Then we'll do a little bit with the code generator, how to make your own uh, Civi Angular project. And I expect that we don't have a lot of Angular you know, it's uh, experienced devs in the room. So I'll, I'll try to do a quick rundown of some terminology, but I don't really like the glossary approach that it's sort of a bookish approach. Um, and I prefer to open up a, a text editor and start writing some code. And as I do things that don't make any sense, people can complain and ask questions. Uh, does that sound like a plan? All right. <laughs> So background, Civi Mail in version 4.6 got a significant overhaul. If you remember 4.5 or earlier, it looked a lot like this. Um, this screen does not make a whole lot of sense when you start drilling down on it. A lot of people, uh, when they're on step two, they want to go back to step one. So they try to click on that header and they can't go back. Um, and actually, it's kind of important to go back and forth between step one and two, because over here in step two, we give the count of recipients, which is based off of data from step one. And so if you want to find out, if you want to get the right number of recipients or you, you get the right groups, you're going to go back and forth to compare the count with the actual list. Um, and going back and forth kind of sucks because you have to use these buttons at the bottom, which do a full page refresh each time around. So we wanted something a bit better than that. And I had a lot of discussions with uh, users and partners and, um, and folks on the core team about how Civi Mail should look and how it should work. And we came up with a few different mockups. Uh, one, uh, one idea was sort of a single screen where a lot of these options like track and respond and tests and whatnot are sort of advanced drill down features. You're not required to do those things. Uh, but if you want to go off to a tab, you can. Um, and you might notice that the recipient count updates immediately after you select a recipient. Go figure. Uh, but in fact, the layout was very contentious because there was one group that wanted to go sort of simplified single screen with advanced options. There was another group that wanted a wizard. So they, they liked having multiple steps. They just thought it could be done a bit better. So you should have links in the top. Um, and maybe the first screen should prioritize the fields that you would expect when sending a mailing. So when you send a mailing, you expect to see subject, recipients, the body. And then everything else is kind of advanced functionality that comes from Civi Mail. Um, so this screenshot, you know, it's, it's actually a three-step wizard. Why is there this dispute? Like, what's, what's the problem that is really being addressed here? The fact is that Civi Mail has a whole lot of options. And it's really, for a lot of users, it's too many options. At the same time, we can't remove the options. They do serve a purpose. They were added for a good reason. Uh, so we need some kind of coping strategy when faced with all those options, i.e. providing pop-ups or tabs or drill downs. Um, and I think that really what we saw are two different coping strategies. One, again, focused on pop-ups and, and tabs. The other focused on sort of this grand tour where you show off all of the features that Civi Mail has, um, but you give them out in bite-sized chunks. Um, I didn't think that it was possible to produce one layout that served all the needs or that, that would serve both camps in 4.6. So 4.6 actually shipped with four different layouts for Civi Mail built in. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
So we saw the screenshot for the Unified and the Wizard. The compromise is what you see by default in Civi Mail. Um, and then if you enable multi-user functionality where one user might draft a message, another user approves the message, another user schedules the message for delivery, this is used by a couple very large organizations, uh, then you would get the multi-user layout. Thank you, <laughs> because I think this is actually a big point. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, if you want to implement four different layouts, you don't want to re-implement the entire screen. You want chunks of content that you can rearrange. So you want to reuse the WYSIWYG component. You want to reuse, uh, let's see, this preview box is the same on each of them. The header and footer uh, which is not in our screenshot, but you know what header and footer look like. Um, that content inside that tab is the same there as it would be inside this accordion. Right? They're just they're chunks of reusable content that uh, are based off the major features of Sigmail. So Civi CRM has not traditionally had a good concept of a block or a chunk of reusable content. We have some integrations for five or six sort of randomly chosen features that you can use as Drupal blocks. And then we have a different five or six sort of randomly chosen features that you can use as WordPress shortcodes. Um, and we also have a few places within Civi Core where if you load a certain, where, where you manually load a certain Smarty template and you manually call some PHP functions and they behave sort of like a chunk of reusable content. But it's not really a, a model for building blocks, which Angular, fortunately, has a model for reusable building blocks. I know it's not really radical, blocks and short codes and these sorts of things. They've been around all the time. All the major frameworks have it. Um, but it felt a little radical at the time. <laughs> all right. so. Let's, let's jump in and do a little bit with, uh, with Angular. Code generator, uh, the Civics code generator, which you can download by itself, or you can get as part of build kit, uh, provides three commands that are particularly interesting for us here. One is generating a Civi CRM module. The next is generating a Angular module, which lives inside of your Civi CRM module. And the, Third is generating a page, a new screen, as part of your Angular module. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, then let's do it. All right, so I've got my D46 folder here. And am I logged in? All right. So what was that command? Here we go. Generate module or example my mod. Very nice. And just because I'm a little paranoid, let's go to administer system settings, manage extensions, and make sure that the extension is enabled. <coughs> this could be faster. Why is the extension page still really slow? <laughs> um, sorry, sorry if that sounds like I'm moaning it. Yeah, so uh, there are two things. That, the main thing is that on the command line, I actually just enabled the extension, which would have reset a whole bunch of caches. And so now it needs to do a new scan. Um, and here we go. So we have our example module. And it's enabled. I'll bet if I reload it, it goes faster. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we do civics and generate Angular module. And let's look at the help screen first. The name ah, up here. Yes. Okay. Is it part, part of the civics generation? Is part of civics now? Because it's something that you know I screwed up every time, and everybody else screwed up every time. You make the module, and then you try to use it, and it's not there. <laughs> it's not active. Uh, so can we even disable or install it? Um, well, generally, if you want to manage modules from the command line, you can do it through Drush, and you can use the Civi CRM API. You know, it's it takes five seconds to type it, so I'll type it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, so generating an Angular module. Now, Angular modules don't necessarily match Civi CRM modules, right? Civi CRM within it actually has a list of five or six unique mod Angular modules. Um, however, I'm expecting that for a simple extension, you would do one Civi extension, one Angular module, and put all your Angular code in there. If you're doing something complicated, it might be more Angular modules, so you might need to use this advanced option. But for the moment, I'm just going to use the default, which is to make a, an Angular module that matches the Civi CRM module. So we had called it my mod there, and it is my mod there. Uh, let's take a quick peek at those three files. The ANG folder is where all the Angular code goes. This PHP file is simply a declaration that we have some JavaScript code, we have CSS, partial settings, so that when you go to the web page, we can load those JS files. Um, the CSS file, empty boilerplate. The JS file, basically empty boilerplate, um, but it does declare an Angular module with the name we've given and it declares some dependencies on other Angular modules. So the three dependencies here, CRM UI is a collection of UI elements from Civi, like the accordion uh, and the tab set that we use in Civi Mail. CRM Util is more JavaScript programmer utilities. Uh, and ng route uh, will s is how we manage pages within Angular, which will dig into as the very next command. All right, so a page, and I can talk about this a little bit more in the glossary, but a page is generally based off of some JavaScript controller and some path that you want to display it at. Let's do like the example, edit control about me. Three files. This is kind of useful to know. Uh, the page we've created has that URL. All right. Um, just to break that URL down a little bit, in Civi Core, all of the Angular pages come off of a common base page, which means as soon as you go here, it loads all the JavaScript for all the Civi Mail screens um, and for our new screen. The cool thing is that that JavaScript and all those resources are aggregated and can be cached on the client side. So when you come back to this, it will always have the files available. The not so cool thing is the first time you load it, it needs to download all the JavaScript for all of the Angular pages. Um, at our current scale, it's not a problem. It will probably require some change in a future version of Civi uh, as we get to a larger scale. All right, so you have a base page, and then we have this stuff after the base page. Right, that hash sign traditionally was used for bookmarking to a subsection within the screen. In Angular and other single page applications, uh, this is actually used for routing. And if we change 
you know, about me to mailing new, and that will be an entirely different screen. It's like a module in any other system. It's a collection of related features and classes and files. Uh, in Civi Core, we have a module for the City Mail UI. We have another module for AB testing, which incidentally was a great use case for the blocks that we had from City Mail because it's the same composition screen, the same scheduling screen, except rearranged in a different way and with two copies of everything. Uh, then case types, CRM UI I mentioned that handles accordions and tabs and wizards, CRM util for basic utilities. A route, uh, that is the mapping from an address like mailing new unify to a piece of JavaScript code and to an HTML file. So we have uh, three routes that are listed up there. Um, the city mail composition screen which uses the unified layout as the first one. Uh, the second one is for editing an existing mailing given some variable ID number using the unified layout. Or if we want to edit some mailing with a variable ID number using the wizard layout, we put in slash wizard. But in each case, we have um, a different URL and it maps to a controller, which is different between here and here, and it maps to a template, which is different between here and here. Controller, all right? That is basically a function that runs as soon as the page loads and is responsible for wiring things up. So if you uh, need to load some content, you could load a content in the controller, or if you need to define some helpers or um, provide some data for H, uh, the HTML template, you can fetch it here. Partial. Uh, for whatever reason, we don't use the term uh, template in normal Angular speak. They refer to it as a partial. It's just a small snippet of HTML that gets included somewhere. Uh, Do you have a So the, H, the Smarty templates are loaded when you request the main page, right? For example, you CVCM slash A. Yes, that, exactly. Yeah. And if I navigate between different sections, you know, go back to mailing one, 
that's not contacting the server at all to do a rendering. Uh, it will do an API call to look up the data that's in mailing number one, but there's no templating happening on the server. What happens is we actually, um, when we first request the page, we get a bundle with a list of all of the HTML partials uh, prefetched. Is, is this a convention in CV that all Angular thing will have this CVCRM slash A as the base prefix? For the moment it is. Uh, I, I think it may change if we have some large apps, but uh, when you go through the Angular documentation, it all, and the tutorials, it is all driven towards single page applications. And so if we were to do something else where we were creating a new base page for each use case, it would not match up with the standard Angular documentation. Um, that's the main reason why I did it this way. All right, so in that HTML snippet, you might notice that there's some funny markup. The CRM UI tab, CRM UI tab set, those are not standard HTML. Those are called directives in Angular. And basically, Angular allows you to create your own custom markup, your own custom language within HTML by uh, creating these directives. A quick note on directives. The names of directives will take two different forms. When you use a directive in HTML, it has dashes. When you have a case to define a directive or use it in JavaScript, it will use camel case. I didn't write that. That's just the way they do it. Service. <clears throat> so when, for example, you create a new mailing, we need to issue an API call that says, mailing API, make a new record. Um, and that can be done through the CRM API service. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that our controller uses the service. Oops. Our controller here is using the service. And, oops, I went down. There we go. Over here, we have angular.module.service, which declares CRM API is a function which does some things. Uh, you might notice as a coding convention that pretty much everything you do in, in JavaScript in Angular begins with this notation where it's Angular, look up a module, and then define something. So you dot .service or dot .controller, um, dot .config, I, I won't try to drag you through those right now, but just that's a general structure. Also in this code snippet, we can see the concept of injection, right? And injection has been referred to as a little magic. Um, injection is basically the idea that your controller, for example, needs to use CRM API. It declares an import for CRM API. And Angular knows how to take this function CRM API and figure out that somewhere else, like down here, CRM API has been declared. Binding. If you've done development in uh, other frameworks, especially if you did development like 20 years ago, this would probably be a pretty familiar concept. Um, but binding is the ability to match a snippet in HTML to a piece of JavaScript data. In this example here, we have our mailing controller. We're editing a mailing, and we define a, ma a record called mailing with an ID and a subject and a body HTML. Then we have our partial HTML where we're displaying that information. It's, it matches up very directly. Mailing.subject, mailing.subject. What's kind of cool is that you can have the same variable multiple times. So the title of the page has the subject line 
and this input form has the subject line. When you edit this input form, it will update the title, and it will update the data up here. So to see that, let's go back to our About Me page. Right now, the greeting is, hello, stranger. All right, my name is Bugs Bunny. And I guess it's pretty informal because it only wants to use my first name. <clears throat> A neat trick, which is mentioned here, is that on any Angular page in Civi, you can append this angular debug equals one, and some additional information becomes available. Uh, basically, the, all of the data that you're working with can be inspected here. And you'll see that as I change data, hello world, it updates the data model. You mean that's only when you've got debug enabled? Correct. Um, and to see an even more colorful example, we've got a mailing record up here. I type in subject line, hello world, and there's our subject line. Bindings can be used for data, as in the previous example. They can also be used for functions and actions. So when someone clicks on a button, we want it to fire off some JavaScript, which we declared up here. Oops. You might have noticed this funny word dollar sign scope, which appears in both examples with bindings. Dollar sign scope is the variable in JavaScript that is shared with HTML. So if you want some function or some piece of data to be available in this HTML, then you have to assign it to the scope up here. Last part of the glossary is a promise. Um, if you've been doing a lot of JavaScript, you might have seen promises before. Uh, if you've only done a little bit of JavaScript, you've might have seen code snippets like this one at the top where you're calling the API and then you pass in a success function. And as soon as the API finishes, it runs your success function, which is cool. I mean, you want to know when the API finishes. But if you have two or three APIs to call, then you might need to do the exact same thing inside the success function. And then you need to do the same thing again inside the body of that success function and then repeat it you wind up getting a very deep set of code, which can be hard to read. A promise is a slightly different way to handle the success function, right? In its most basic form, uh, a promise is an object which has a, uh, a then function, right? So here we're saying, call the API, get a single mailing which has this ID. As soon as the promise of data has been satisfied. As soon as we actually have a record from the API, take that API result and do something. So output to our log. It doesn't look much better in comparing these two because there's only one call. When we have multiple calls, you can chain them together and they start to look better. So in this example, we have, uh, I actually can read better here. We get our mailing, our single mailing, and then we log that mailing to the console. And then we do another API call where we get the attachments to the mailing. And then we wait for it to come back. And as soon as it returns, then we log information about the attachments. All right. So that's all the bookish knowledge. Is, any questions on that? <laughs> okay. All right, so let's try to go through it 
we'll do a pass through basically the same content again, but slower and writing out code as we go. All right. So we've already made a module in Civi and activated it. And it takes a few minutes to activate a module. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to reuse the Civi module from before. But let's make a new Angular module. Um, let's call it like the email editor. So a, a small page where we'll get a list of the email addresses for the current contact, edit it, save it back to the database. First, we need to come up with a naming convention for our files. And we're just going to use this email edit as the, the name of the module and the prefix for everything. So we need to load our JavaScript. Yeah. That's right. Yes. So um, I did create the boilerplate with civics before, and now I'm doing it by hand, mostly so that you have a chance to see the code. So it's not something yeah. that No, actually, you could uh, use civics to generate the second module. Absolutely. I don't have any CSS in this case, so I'm going to be a little cocky and not declare that. But I will need some HTML. How does that look? Email edit. All right. All right, so. On basically every Angular page in Civi, you need access to three objects. The Angular service, which allows you to do things like that, and the jQuery service, and the underscore JS. Underscore JS contains a whole bunch of JavaScript helper functions. If you want to sort through an array or uh, filter an array by the properties of the objects and get a smaller list of objects, um, Angular gives some nice helpers for that. So email edit. And I want CRM UI, yes. OK. I'm going to go reload this page just to make sure there aren't any JavaScript errors. I haven't made any major typos. It seems like it didn't crash, so that's a good sign. So let's, let's create our email editor JavaScript file. And I need this little bit of boilerplate again. Angular dot. So to declare our new page, we need to create a route, um, which I guess we can do it by, we can open up the other example. So the material that we're getting into now is mostly standard Angular material. If you look up a tutorial on Angular, it will walk through this in you know much slower. What do we want to call our email editor? Uh, my emails.
we'll create a controller, which will be our JavaScript function, email editor. <coughs> There's a convention in Angular of using CTRL as the last phrase in the name of a controller, just so that you can recognize it a bit quicker. And I'm going to skip the template URL for a second, because I'm really lazy and don't want to make a new file. I'm just going to say, hello world. So we make a controller with the name up here, copied from above. And our controller doesn't actually need to do anything because it's just a hello world. So reload. Let's go to my emails. Really? OK. Very good. It says, hello world. And now, oh, sorry, I had planned out the series of steps I wanted to do here. All right, so we've got an empty page. Now let's make um, a fake person record. Right? I, it, loading data requires some more APIs. Let's just make a, a little bit of data and get it on the screen. So scope.contact. We shall be pretty familiar with some of the civvy fields right now like display name, first name, et cetera. So I'm going to make up some fields that match the normal ones. Maybe contact ID, one, two, three. And instead of hello world, we'll do hello. We get Hello Bugs Bunny. And if we wanted to make that editable, we could do input ng model contact display name, reload. So we, now we have two fields here. All right, but we're not really interested in the contact. We're mostly interested in their emails. So let's do some fake emails. So our contact has their first email is And there's actually a whole lot of fields we could put in, like location type and all that. I don't care. Let's give them a second email. Hit reload. And I don't see anything because I didn't update the HTML. But I don't see any crashes either. That's good. I take the small successes. If we want to list it out, we could do, I we could take the list of emails, format them as JSON, and print it out. And there we get the same data. But that's not very pretty to look at. So let's do a bulleted list. Now here we get into some Angular directives that are a core part of Angular. Anything that comes built into Angular uh, gets prefixed with this ng. Uh, and ng repeat is our loop mechanism. So we want to loop over the list of email addresses and create an email variable in each iteration. So we'll do that. And this is really starting to get unreadable. This needs to be in another file. We'll do that momentarily. So we have our unordered list with data coming from the emails and just a bunch of list items, which are that. Oh, oh no! 
<laughs> Is it? Yeah. Uh, this is not pretty. It seems to be print. It did pull it, print out a bulleted list, but it's given us the JSON of each email address, and we want an individual field from there. So it's email dot email. There we go. That looks a bit better. And if we wanted to make it editable, we change it to an input. Hit reload. And now we have it editable. Oh, I should be looking at. OK, so this markup is getting too long. I, we can't really do much more with it in line. So we're going to move it to a new file. Um, for the, the code generator and for the Civi core, I follow a convention of putting the HTML partials and the JavaScript files side by side. And whenever possible, whenever it's a simple use case, giving them the same name. So H email editor JS, email editor HTML. Let's copy that. All right, let's make it look a little bit nicer than that. And let's give it some titles. Hit reload, and I forgot to do something. It's not any different. I forgot to edit this. It still says template. We need a template URL based off of our module email edit slash copy the file name, paste it in, and now reload. There we go. Now we've got our H2s for greeting and emails. Um, let me close that. So I mentioned before the debug facility. I would like to be able to debug some of this. And in particular, I want debug information about the emails and the contacts. Hit reload. Visually, nothing has changed until we add angular debug equals 1. And now we can see in here the full data dump of the available email addresses. We're already ahead of the game. We've made that editable. Let's add an email address. OK, that shouldn't be too hard. The list of email addresses is just an array. So in JavaScript, to add something to an array, right? you do scope. You take the array name and say push a new object like contact ID 123 email. But this isn't going to run at quite the right time. This runs as soon as the controller initializes. We want a button where the user clicks Add, and then we create the record, and it shows up on the screen. So let's go make that button. And when they click it, we want to run some func like a do add function. And do add for 
what we call that. Now there's a problem with the code I've just written. Does anyone know what the problem is? It's really close, right? I, I've created a function called do add, but I didn't use scope. So right now this function is only visible within our JavaScript code directly. It's not visible in <coughs> HTML. I wonder what the error message looks like when we do this. That email, it just does nothing. Because <laughs> there's no function. If we say scope dot do add equals, now we reload. We get our new email address. That's a few too many new email addresses. I don't think he needs new at example that'll work three times. So we would like to have a delete button. Let's put the delete button right next to it. Uh, is it better to do like a button button? Or maybe we should do an href. I feel like that for some reason that's pretty common to do an icon or something that's not literally an HTML button. So we'll do an ahref, and we'll just call it x. And do delete. And hit reload, and now each of these has a delete button next to them. It's not doing anything because it's this do delete function, um, which we didn't define. And there's actually an ambiguity in do delete. Both of these x's correspond to do delete. How, do it, how does the function know which x was clicked? It's got to be a particular one, right? Fortunately, there's a variable right here. which we can reference. And I'm going to rename this variable so that it's a little clearer uh, what's going on. It's not just the email text. It's the record of the email, the contact ID, and the location type, and all that information. So we're deleting that record. Scope.doDelete. <laughs> and we were given an email record. So we need to remove the email from this array. And here I can never quite remember the, uh, the JavaScript incantation. One can Google it. I have written it down in advance. We need to search through the array, find the index of the old email address, and then remove that index from the array. So let's go to index of. We're going to search inside the list of emails. and for this particular email record. If that email record really does exist somewhere in the array, then take the array and call splice index one, which basically goes to that offset and removes a single record. What if you had more than one record with the same email address? It would remove the first one, <laughs> which might not be correct. <laughs> um, I think what, maybe what we should actually do then is not pass through the full email record, but I think there's a dollar sign index. I, when you use ng repeat, it defines a number of variables by default. I don't have those committed to memory, but there are things like dollar sign index, dollar sign first, dollar sign last, Let's see what happens when we do dollar sign index. Or if there are email IDs, we could actually pass them. If, if the scope.emails has index as email ID or, or its own index. OK. Um, from while in the HTML for calling, we pass email rec dot. Um, oh. Oh, you do e like that? 
dot mm. email ID. Oh, that, that that's a good point. That it would normally work. Yeah, the ID will be email instead. Yeah. In this case, it's not going to work because we have fake data yeah. and there's no ID column. Yeah. <laughs> and it would also be problematic in cases where you add and remove a record. So I do add email. It hasn't been saved yet. There's no ID right. assigned for this one. So each of these has a blank ID. So we've got a working add remove UI based off of dummy data. We want it to be based off of real data, right? Let's start out with something easy like the person's name. Okay. This is something that I actually thought was a little bit unique in Angular. When you declare a route, you can say, perform some Ajax work before we even display the page. And that's actually useful for something like mailing, oops. When you say mailing one to unified, right, it needs to look up this record, mailing number 12, based off of information from the route. So generally, we do a lookup at, um, at the route level. And what we want to look up is a record, we'll call it the contact record. And we need some logic to look up the contact record using the API. Contact get. and we'll get it for the currently logged in user. Now interesting thing, any variable that you resolve, like the contact, is available for injection here. So if I were to just say console.log, so, that would not work because the variable isn't defined yet. But if I import it, then it will work. So we reload, and uh-oh, CRM API is not defined. Generally, when something is not defined, we need to inject it.
the old model required a hand crank, I think, and that was very distracting during the speeches. Carry on. <laughs> Do you... All right, so we do this API call and it shows up in our log. Cool. Let's actually display. We don't want Bugs Bunny here. That. We've injected the contact and now we're passing it back over to HTML for display. We get hello blank. Uh oh. That's because I don't have a display name. <laughs> I'm I'm the admin user. Here, all right. Let's give me a name. Uh, well, that was one reason why, but not the only reason why it's a display. <laughs> um, Let's look at our debug information, right? It should be that in our contact, we have a display name property. Why isn't it working? Go to debug and, oh, look at that. We've got is error version one, et cetera. This was an API call, so it had a bit of metadata surrounding the response. We need to unwrap that. So let's do contact, the contact dot values. And we don't want a list of values. There's only one contact who's currently logged in on the screen. So we'll do a get single, and we'll, uh, oh, I might not even need that. So now we reload. In our debug section, okay, this looks like a proper contact record. And it does say hello to Martin, I add that and rename myself. Okay, cool. So we can do the same thing with email addresses. single will not work because the user might have multiple addresses. So instead, we'll take it and look up that property. There we go, that's a bit better. <clears throat> if I were to go back to, let's not use that, that's another presentation. Second email address. We do. We get both of them. That is a little hard to read, though. I need that to be wider. Maybe I should have made a CSS file. Or maybe I think. I'll leave styling as a, you know, an exercise to the viewer. <laughs> okay, so we're correctly loading the emails. Now we need to save the emails. So 
that requires a button to start. Do save, that requires a function. Let's go do save this function. Does anybody know the API call that will let me take an array of emails and save them as a batch? So maybe a little more obscure. There is one. <laughs> the API has you know all kinds of things. It's the replace action. reconciles it with a list on the server. Which means it first does a search to see what old email addresses were there. Then it takes your list of email addresses. It checks to see if there are matches between them. If there are matches, then it updates the matches. If your list adds something new, it will insert that on the server. If your list is missing one of them, it will remove it from the server. Is that only for emails or is that for other entities? That's for anything. Uh, I think it might be better to do an actual address than an actual ID. Save button shows up, save, and CRM API not defined because we need to inject it. I can't read that very well. Just hit save. Okay, that seemed to do something. Here, hit reload, and there's the update. 